to the pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Carl Goldsey. Here. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Greg Scott. Here. Item two, approval of the agenda. I believe we need a motion to add the resolution to accept housing program lien payoff. And that would be under 7B. I'm sorry. The resolution that was placed in front of us related yes. to accept housing program lien payoff. We need a motion to place that on our agenda. I'll make a motion to add the housing program lien payoff to our agenda. I would also like to discuss um, for DMs. Okay, so we have a motion, um, 7B, do we have a support? I'll support that to add 7B, the housing program resolution. Roll call vote. We have to do a roll call on that? No. No. Okay. Okay. And what else did you want to add? Per diems. Uh, you want to do that under unfinished business? Sure. Okay. You need a motion for that? I don't think we do. We do for that, even though it's not a it's not a resolution. You still need a motion for that. If you're going to add it to the agenda. You need a resolution. Yes. Just to add it, or then can we can we accept the agenda with the with the changes? Right. We can add yeah, five can things have them into a single motion if you want to. Okay. My question was, Commissioner Scott, was if we needed a motion because that was a resolution. It wasn't just because it was added. That was my question. Right. I mean, a motion is just putting it on the agenda. And now when it comes time to vote, you know, I want to do Correct. a roll call then. But just to get it on the agenda, okay. it's vote, it's fine. Somebody could call for roll call if they wanted to, but it's not necessary. So you're going to per diem under unfinished business? Sure. Any other additions or corrections? We have a motion to approve the agenda with the stated changes. I like the motion. We have a motion from Commissioner Simmons. Yes. Yeah. Support from Commissioner Mayhew. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Item three, declaration of conflicts of interest. Are there any? I see none for me. I see none. Item four, review of minutes, July 13th, 2023, regular meeting minutes. Has anybody had an opportunity to review them? Yeah. Did someone entertain a motion? <laughs> I'll do a motion. We have a motion from Commissioner Simmons. I'll second. Support from Commissioner Wilsey. Any further discussion? This is for the July 13th, 2023 regular meeting minutes. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries item 4B, July 13th, 2023 closed session meeting minutes. Those were handed out to us. Has everybody had an opportunity to read those? Right. Yes. Yep. The clerk put them in front of us when she came here. That one. Yep. They're brief. Did you have one for Commissioner Simmons? Uh, I put it down here already. It was upside down, uh -huh. facing down, facing down. And my young I didn't have to remember your staff oh. put it right on top of oh, oh there it is. we found it i know it's here because it said it's here it's here got it you making a motion to approve it yeah we have a motion from commissioner mayhew second support from commissioner simmons any further discussion i need mean, there's there, those you got to sign them and date them guys all in favor say yes yes yeah. Yeah. opposed Motion carries item 4C, July 20th, 2023, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. I'll make a motion to approve Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. We have a motion from Commissioner Wilty. Do we have a support? Here. Support from Commissioner Mayhew. Any further discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries item five, public comment on agenda items only. Is there any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? 
Item six, correspondence. We have correspondence from the city of West Branch related to the ZBA hearing notice and correspondence from, I'm, I'm going to say that wrong. Antonagan <laughs> County related to opposition to state sanitary code. Those have been received and filed. Item 7A, uh, consent. 7, consent agenda. Item 7A, resolution to certify Ogemaw County representative to the MERVS 2023 retirement conference. But you had a second thing on And our second one is item B, correct. Do oh, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to it, uh, accept, to uh, accept this uh, resolution as certified the representative of the MERS. Okay. I'll second. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Simmons. Is there any further discussion on that? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 7B was the resolution to accept housing program lien payoff. Um, since this was just put in front of us, Tim, did you want to give us a brief? Sure. Um, the housing program, when they uh, right or award loans to the low-income uh, homeowners for housing repairs, uh, one of the criteria is they have to uh, sign this as a lien in the amount of the loan on the property itself. If a property owner wants to sell the property, that lien needs to be paid off. And we were informed late yesterday that this home uh, was not only up for sale, but has a buyer, they're ready to close tomorrow. Wow. And so that's why it's suddenly here before you. The... Um, Sellers um, uh, financing, I'm not quite sure what to call them, uh, requires us to actually be present to sign off and receive our, our the check for the $2,800, uh, which we'll bring back to the treasurer immediately. But they require us to have a, a, something on record, in our case, a resolution, authorizing me to stand in on your behalf, sign the two or three papers is all it is, and receive the check and bring it back. Um, and this is their requirement, not necessarily ours. As far as we're concerned, a number of these, when they sell, the homeowner will bring in the check and that's that's the end of it. But in this case, there's a bank involved and uh, they just want everything uh, you know, accounted for on paper. And so that's what this is. So we'll be getting a check back for 2057. Yes. And I'll hand it to you. I'll hand it to you. <laughs> oh, I like that. Or maybe I'll make and give it to Leanne, I don't know. <laughs> Any questions for Tim? Can we entertain a motion for this? I'll make a motion. Second. Motion with Commissioner Simmons, support from Commissioner Scott. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Oltsy. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Good. Item eight, new business. Francis. Hi. From Nemska, come on up. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. So good evening. I was doing some quick math while I was waiting for the meeting to start, and this is my seventh time coming to present the annual report on behalf of my organization, NEMSCA. So my name is Francis Omani. I'm the strategy and development director for our community action agency. And uh, we are a trusted agency that has been around for it'll be 55 years next month. We've been providing programs and resources um, and opportunities to hardworking individuals to reach self-sufficiency in whatever way that we can. So today I just wanted to go over our annual report and talk a little bit about our program impact. And then there's some inserts in there today that specific data regarding Ogemaw County. So when you open up the annual report, you'll see a message from Lisa Bowen, our CEO, Executive Director. And then below that is our senior leadership that uh, are the ones that oversee the many, many programs that we provide. And to the right is a list of our current board as of when this went to print. And as a reminder, I hope everybody is aware of it, but we are a tripartite board. Um, that is something that's required under the CSBG Act. And what that means is that one third of our board is elected officials, which historically have always been county commissioners. Um, so thank you for the county commissioners that are here today that either are on our board 
uh, Commissioner Simmons, Simmons or have been on our board. We appreciate that. One third is our private citizens and then one third is what we call our consumer sector. And that's what makes us unique um, compared to some other organizations that are run by boards is that the consumer sector means that we have one third of our board that either are low income or represent low income in their community so that we can hear their voice and listen to their perspectives and see how our programs work with their lens. Um, so with that, we have 27 members on our board. To the right is a, just an example of who we are. So our mission statement, why we're here today and why I'm here today is because I believe in our mission, which is to enhance quality of life by empowering individuals and strengthening the communities around us. And that's really an important part of our mission and our goals is to make sure that we're providing the programs and the resources that are needed in the community and that we're acting as that catalyst for people in need and hopefully being a very strong partner without the other agencies in the community that are doing their job just as hard as we are, such as the health department, mental health, DHHS, and so on and so forth. The map is just a reminder of our core county area. You'll see, of course, Ogemaw County is one of our core counties out of the 11. And then we have Ross Common in there as well that we provide quite a few programs to. And then what I don't have depicted in this in our report is the extended map. So we actually have Head Start Preschool program into the Thumb area and as far west as the Big Rapids area. So with at least one of our programs, we touch into 22 counties. So we are the largest geographically as far as it goes with community action agencies in the state of Michigan. Moving on to the next page, this is where we get the, the numbers, right? The numbers and the data that I think a lot of people enjoy. On the left side is just a snapshot of some of the services that we've provided in our core area and extended when it comes to early childhood and what that means. So we put some value to that this year when we were putting the annual report together. So for example, if you go to the third road down when it talks about all of the volunteer hours that we were able to capture in the last fiscal year, and these could be parents volunteering in the Head Start classroom. It could be our, our foster grandparent programs, our senior companion programs, the people that are helping load the food boxes. Even here in Ogemaw County, when we do our monthly food distributions, we have wonderful volunteers that are on site that are helping load the food boxes and, and pack them. And you'll see we put a value to that for um, what it would be if they were working for a wage. Um, same thing with the food boxes below that. Between our two, two food distributions, there was almost $1.7 million worth of food that went back out into the communities for those in need. The weatherization program was able to provide 181 homes in the last fiscal year. And then you'll see that that was a huge number of just over half a million meals were provided to homebound seniors in our area, which you can see would furnish 63,124 tables that were had a eight top, had eight seatings on it. So it's pretty cool. The inserts that you have here today are highlighting two of our wonderful programs, our School Success Partnership Program. So we um, actually are here working with the Alternative Educational Academy of Ogemaw County with this school success program. So just as a refresher, this is one of our many programs, but with this program in particular is pretty unique um, because what happens is we typically partner either with public schools or in this situation with the Alternative Ed, and we have liaisons that provide that extra support for high-risk or at-risk students, regardless of age now. We have them in elementary school, middle school, high school, and even as, as indicated here, adult ed. And so we're here to provide those resources to make sure that they either graduate or can get their GED, diploma, whatever it is that they need to get just to further and, and you know cross that step so that they can go on to bigger and better things after that. The flyer below that is uh, the amount of food boxes that were distributed here in Oakmont County for our monthly food commodities. Um, it used to be called CSFD, which was the Commodity Supplemental Food Program, which that doesn't sound very exciting. So we actually went through a rebranding and changed it, and now it's called Golden Groceries. And the reason why we did that is because when we were doing some surveys last year, trying to figure out why we weren't connecting with seniors that actually needed this food, they thought, I don't need it that bad. I think somebody else needs that food more than me. And we're like, no, this is for you. If you qualify for it, it's for you to take. And so we changed it to Golden Grocery so it didn't sound so governmentally, right? And it's really increased a lot of our participation. So that's cool. The next page, it just shows some highlighted things that we had going on in the last year with a list of our services that are provided. 
flipping it over to the next page, which we have a whole page dedicated to one of our pilot program that was launched last year called BOSS. BOSS stands for Bridges of Efficiency. And where this, we have mentors that are current staff that work in different programs. And they basically take a family that's very high risk for potentially remaining in poverty. And they provide a lot more one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation, resources, tools in the toolbox that they need so that they can become successful. We received grant funding for this to just try to launch it and see how it worked. And we had five or six families that we were working with. And three of them did so well and, became, and you know, were able to leave this program because they were in safe housing, got employment, that three of them actually were recognized down at the Capitol in May um, for the, at the Capitol to just honor them for what they did in the last year. So that was pretty cool. And you can see the pictures below of a couple of them that received the awards. To the right are just some stories. I shouldn't say just, there are some stories of some of our program impact and the lives that we touched every day. The next page over is our financial overview. So you can see how we're funded. It doesn't fluctuate very much from year to year. We're typically majority federally funded, some state funding in various contexts coming in underneath that. And then the remainder is local or in kind. And then the graph below that, of course, is our expenses that shows where the money goes back out. And so, of course, by far, you can see letter A is our early childhood services, which is early Head Start, Head Start, and GSRP. That makes up quite a bit of our budget. Um, to give another example of how large that division is, if we're fully staffed, we have about 750 employees. Of the 750, probably 550 fall under that divisions. So that's another way to show how large that is. And you'll see that we provide 30 plus programs here in Oklahoma County. Like I said before, anything from early Head Start, Head Start Preschool, School Success, Homeless and Prevention Services, Food Commodities. And we're also designated the Region 9 Area Agency on Aging. Um, so a variety of programs that are available to our seniors in this county um, come through the NEMSCA agency first. We're the second largest community action agent second largest community action agency when it comes to budget. But of that huge budget that we receive, 96 cents out of the dollar goes back out to the programs. So that's a 4% administrative rate or what we call the indirect rate. And um, we're really proud of that. Um, we've kept it pretty consistent as long as I've been around. And uh, we continue that every year as much as we can to make sure that as many cents to the dollar can go back out in the community. To the right are some things that we're really proud of as staff. So these are some staff highlights. We had 12 staff that went through a four-day poverty certification so that they could become certified poverty educators. We had our whole homeless and prevention team that you can see below that were awarded a state award being recognized for the Homeless Awareness Award. And then we had some staff that went through a leadership program last year that, were, that graduated. And then on the last page, um, we were awarded a top workplace by the Detroit Free Press for the third time in the last 14 years. So we we're really excited about that and went down and got our award for that as well. And we're just here to try to make sure that everybody's aware of our programs. We are such a large organization, we provide so many different resources that sometimes a lot of people don't understand the capacity of what we have. So this is where my ask is. I'm getting really good, seven years in a row, I finally have an ask to the board, is my ask is to make sure that if you are talking to your neighbors, constituents, family members, or whatever, and you think that potentially that we have a program that can help them, that you can connect with me, connect with Commissioner Simmons as our representative, or have them go to the website so that we can see if we can help them out. So can I answer any questions about our annual report? No, thank you. Any questions, Commissioners? No, I have any questions. Really appreciate what you guys do. I know I thought I knew quite a bit about looking at the budget and everything. Mm -hmm. A lot bigger than I thought. Yeah. I have a comment. Yes, Commissioner Sills. Uh, this organization is very, very large. And this, this board that um, operates this organization, um, they're probably the best functional board I, I, I know of. I mean, to keep, keep the expenses down to under 4%, uh, they do a phenomenal job. I, I can't say enough about them. I'm just glad you're here. And and I didn't know about the Golden Groceries because I had a friend of mine that went to the day. 
Canada. She said, you know, they call it golden globe trees now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's how I know. Well, good. <laughs> right. Any other comments? Thank you. All right. Well, nice seeing you again. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Sure. Item eight claims. We have a total of claims of $136,869.11. Who reviewed claims? Uh, myself and uh, Mr. Wilson. Go ahead, Commissioner Sons. And um, wasn't anything um, uh, out of place, but there were some uh, I'd, dollar cost items. I explain it. Um, uh, child care, of course, is fifteen thousand two hundred eighty-five, and for local people here that's not sent to different places in the state of Michigan, but stay here, there is um, in the mill proposal to give us back seventy-five percent of that. Not the ones that go; that still be fifty percent. But those that stay here, and we help to get a seventy-five percent reimbursement. That's not law yet, but they're working on it. And the indigent council was uh, ten over ten thousand dollars. And uh, the state's supposed to pay us 100% back on that, isn't it? So it was 10550 but the state will reimburse us. And it was all received lawyer's fees, exactly what it was. And we have Parks and Rec. Um, and there's this 5785 I was surprised, so I took special interest in that myself. And they had an electrical problem out there, but control, and then they had to replace a gate. So that all amounted up to 5785 and Road Patrol was 20000 over 20000 And part of that was um, for medical expenses for an on-duty officer that got injured while he's doing his job. And then I also know the treasurer's office. And they've got a lot of title checks. And when they have properties that they foreclose on and, and work with, it is expensive to do title checks. Um, so that was why it was so expensive. Most of that was 20 That was what it was consumed of was the title checks. And the jail was 21,000. And they had the Meyer Pharmacy and that included Oscoda County and Oklahoma County. And uh, they also had their sewer and water bill, which is $6,700. And they had uh, fire protection thing too, was 629. And the sheriff's office, they, they spend a lot in electricity. It's been um, a lot of fuel for road patrol, and um, that's pretty much all I've seen. There's nothing nothing out of the ordinary for any of this. There, although there are high expenses, total of our expenses weren't that high, but these caught my attention, and I looked into them to see what they were all about, and just gives you an idea of how much it costs to operate this place. <laughs> so, yeah. So I make a motion to. Can I make a motion? Commissioner Wilson, did you have anything else to add? You reviewed them. Yeah, me and we reviewed them together. Perfect. No, go, go ahead. I make a motion that we uh, approve the expenses for the county. We have a motion from Commissioner Simmons. Also. Support from Commissioner Wilsey. Any further discussion? I seen the partners in change in there. It was like 10,000. It must have been for counseling. I don't know if that was in. In between counseling? No, partners in change was in there. Just counseling for typically for kids, for the youth. It's like a $10,000. Gosh, I guess I, yeah, it was part of me. I never noticed that one. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, any further discussion? Roll call vote. Roger Mayhill. Yeah. Charles Wilson. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Uh, yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Danny David. Yes. Item nine, unfinished business, pretiums. Commissioner. Um... Well, there seemed to be some questions, and there were some questions at the... Um... At the transit meeting this morning. So I said, well, we'll discuss it, bring it up. Uh, I noticed in the resolution, I have a copy here if I can find it. I got so much stuff here. But it says as um, if we if we have a, a county commissioner meeting the same day as one of our as one of our um meeting meetings our, our meetings that were we're assigned to these four different boards, then you don't get paid for the board you, meeting you went to. And I, I don't understand why that happened. And I noticed that it was passed in September while everybody was running for office. 
here it is. And my understanding is that it has been changed before people are running for office, because when you start running for office, it's an implied about how much money you will receive as a county commissioner. And to change that beforehand, uh, that means I'm not gonna make that anymore. And um, my understanding is um, it should um, be the same as it was prior to this resolution. Any comments? And I don't know why it was changed. I mean, I had a meeting today and it was quite a lengthy meeting. We did a lot of discussion at transit today. Uh, and it was 11, 12. I don't know, about one o'clock before we got out of there, wasn't it? Yeah. So, and so because I have a meeting tonight, this says I don't get paid for, for doing that. And I don't know why that was put in place. Uh, I was given some insight to it, however, that because there's another committee that meets on the same day as uh, we have a commissioner's meeting, and they meet after the commissioner's meeting, but they meet here. And they didn't see any sense in getting paid for that meeting. And I can understand that too. But when somebody has a meeting in the morning and spends two or three hours at that meeting, um, I'm not gonna have another meeting here this evening for about another five hours. So I'm not gonna sit in this building for five hours waiting for that meeting <laughs> to take place. So that's why I was just wondering why, how that, how that happened when it took place. I, I was actually going to ask for this to be put on the committee of the whole next week um, because I had reached out to uh, Tim to see if there was a final, I had missed a couple meetings here and to see if there was a final decision made um, on what, what you guys chose to do with the, uh, the uh, meetings. And so Tim has sent me the information with the discussion, the, meet, the minutes, and then I asked for an actual um, list of of the uh, agencies and what commissioners are serving on what again um, to see which ones are mandatory and which ones are not because it was brought up at the 911 meeting um, they hadn't heard what the outcome was so that's when I decided to, to find out what the outcome had been so I think we need further clarification on that but I think everybody needs this information that um, I got an email as far as what's been discussed, what's in writing, what resolution was passed. Um, that okay. way, I think. Pardon me. I received a copy of that this morning. Yeah, I think it. I think it all needs to be given to everybody, so then everybody has an opportunity to look it over. Um, Tim also clarified what what um, it's statutory for uh, commissioners to serve on, and you know maybe we can look at this list and in and give more thoughts, but I think this needs to be clearer because I, I don't think from what I read in the uh, committee of the whole minutes, it doesn't look like any decision had been made. Um, I didn't see a resolution on it. I didn't see. Yeah. I asked for the board to help with the interpretation of it. There was no formal resolution, like one we could prepare one, um, but it was just the guidance of you know, somebody turns in an expense voucher. How do we pay it? Where does the funds come from? Right. I, I think I would like this put on the committee of the whole, and I know you're talking about it now, but I think everybody needs this information that was given to me. Again, the, the, the resolution from September that you're discussing, I have a copy of that from September. Um, the minutes where this was discussed, um, I, I think everybody needs a copy of all of this. And I just got an update for this also on the committees that everybody is on. The, and that, the copy I had didn't have transit on it. Yeah. And that, how it does. Right. And that meeting, that email also um, distributed to everybody else as far as what is is uh, mandatory for commissioners to serve on and and um, what is not, what is voluntary, I guess. So because 911 asked me, um, I, and I didn't see them in the list of the email that you provided to me. I didn't see 911 listed in there. Did I miss it? Must have been statutory. Started. It is on there. Oh, as far as statute, I'm not sure if it's statutory or if there's something in the incorporation papers where they. I, I'm not sure on that one. Okay, but there's just a couple of them that are like that. They're kind of gray. I just think we need to clear it up so that way there's no questions moving forward. Do you guys agree? Are you okay with that? Yeah, I think with with Parks and Rec, there it is a mandatory thing that you have to have certain people on there. So. Yeah, it's information that I wasn't aware of. I, I would like further information on that. So even when we're asked questions. Commissioner Scott, do you have anything to add to that? No, I don't. 
So can we put that on and can you distribute that to everybody? Is that okay, Commissioner Simmons? Yes. Okay. Everybody check your email. She should have had a copy of what I sent to Jenny with those documents. Oh, you guys got nobody said anything. <laughs> I thought I'm sorry. I thought it's if I asked for it. Well, I'll include it with the uh information that goes on the Google Drive for the okay. too. So you'll it'll be there available. Item 10 administrative slash controllers report. Uh, just briefly, uh on August 3rd at the committee of the whole meeting, I do have consumers energy committed to that meeting. Uh remember at uh Gosh, one of the last meetings I mentioned that they thought they might need an hour to an hour and a half. So what they've done is also on their calendars reserve the August 24th committee, the whole meeting, in case we don't want to hear uh, any more from them after maybe 45 minutes. So what they've done, they've uh, reserved that date as well. So if we, we need to break it up into two meetings, we can do that. Um, we are busily gathering a lot of data for them about energy usage for all of our buildings. So looking forward to a very constructive conversation with them. On a reminder to the board, our inaugural opioid committee meeting will be on August 10th. This is a firm now at 5.30 at the airport. And we do have the representative from Michigan Association of Counties who will uh, uh, be the main event, if you will, at that meeting going over just the whole uh, uh, globe of what the opioid settlement is all about, what's eligible for payment, and uh, a number of other statistics that I think will be very worthwhile uh, for our first meeting. And then this is the last item to uh, provide an update. We've been talking about the school resource deputies uh, for some time. I have meetings scheduled next week with superintendents of both schools and the sheriff uh, so that we'll all go over what the contract intends, particularly when it comes to overtime and how that process will work. And I'm looking forward to very constructive conversations at both. That's that's all. A couple questions. Questions, go ahead. Um, for that school board meeting, uh, for example, with me and Commissioner Scott being on the law enforcement board, would you want us sitting at that or? Not at this meeting. Um, this is just going over the contract. Um, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't kick you out of the room, but um, this is probably one that you don't want to be as an official committee meeting just yet. Um, I, I think I've got a very good idea of what the interpretation of the board is of that contract. And I frankly think the administrative portion that we've had questions on falls more on our side of the fence than the schools. But I do want to make sure, particularly if it comes to officers being needed at the school for more than the eight hours they're contracted on a day, that the superintendents understand that's over and above the, the fee that's attached to the contract. And they'll have to leave it every time. I'm pretty sure that that's the understanding, but we also have two new superintendents uh, since these contracts were signed. So it's a great opportunity to discuss all that and to get feedback from the schools for the sheriff in terms of how the program's working. So if there are other areas that they want the officer to concentrate on, this is a great opportunity to put that on the table as well and just get everybody together, make sure we're all doing what each other thinks we're doing and uh, hopefully have a very good program as a result. Excellent, the sheriff will be there? He will. Good, good. Uh, my second question, uh, the committee whole, when we had got brought up about the body scanner and the opiate thing, yeah. and then we were told about the uh, Attorney General's office, you know, and you were going to look into contacting them. Were you able to do that? Or? Trying to find a way to get to the contact guy. I've got his name. I know who it is, but it's very hard uh, for whatever reason with the Attorney General to track down the individual. You know, there's a switchboard number you get, and it's virtually impossible to get through that, but I'm sure he's got an extension at some point, yeah, there's an extension for his phone. So I want to get to that. He's actually been assigned to this by the attorney general. He's the expert. I've actually seen him at a couple of conferences. He does know his stuff. And I have no doubt about that. Uh, but I, as we've discussed here, I've got some uh, questions I want to ask. I want to hear the, the response. And I would also encourage when we have the meeting on the 10th with uh, Amy Dolsky, that this come up there too. Uh, she has actually researched this. So I think that'll at least help offer some insight, but I really want to hear from the attorney general's office and find out just exactly what the issue is. Right. And, and I'm sure you will, Tim, but the big thing, especially in our cases, is we have a clinic in our gym. We do. We, we do. need to make sure that that's our real big fighting point. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody is checked. I mean, as far as the medical side, everybody coming into the facility is subject to being cleared by the, the nurse. 
So it's it sounds like an ideal situation to me, but I'm just a layperson. Yeah. Thank you. Any <clears throat> other questions? Go ahead. This this meeting with the consumers to come to and talk to us. Uh, split my mind. Then when I called, uh, just after hours and stuff. So, but I spoke to Commissioner um, David, and she said in the evening would be the best to have that. For what? But that consumers to come here and talk to us about the savings that we can make in this building. Yeah, you have it down for eight five. He just said correct. The August fifth. August third. That's our regular committee. The whole meeting. Yeah. That's during the day, right? That one's the morning. That'd be the morning one. Yeah, if it's going to be that lengthy, I mean, how do you guys feel about starting at eight o'clock in the morning? Is that possible? Any businesses or any business prior to that? That's next week. I, it's. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I mean, it's. A, what about you guys? Uh, I mean, I think it's important to be as consistent as we can with our start times and try not to change change them when we can. Okay. That's just on you know my feeling on it. Yeah. Uh, Pat? I, I just soon keep it at the same time. We got an audience that comes in, especially in the morning. Yep. <clears throat> Daytime meetings, we got more audience. That's fine. Um, do you guys want consumers in here for two separate meetings or do you want an hour and a half at one time? Tim should probably let them know, correct? Yeah, they are um just being cautious and telling me that, I, I don't know that it'll take them that long. Yeah, I mean, we, they get the things we've been talking about, but um, I, I don't know exactly. I, they're talking about bringing a team, so I have no idea what tangents we're going to go down. And the zoning, they're they're quite lengthy, and there's two of them. Can you be first on the agenda? They, they are uh, right now third, but the first two are very brief appointments, okay. um, you know, departments that need some action. And, and Commissioner Simmons and I had met with Tim last uh, Wednesday, I believe it was, and we talked about a meeting related to the uh, administrator, administrator slash controller uh, rule moving forward. And there was going to be an email sent out to see again? what would, uh, um, yep, again, we wanted to see if there was an email sent out. Um, did I miss that email as far as no, what we the commissioner said? we followed up on that, yeah. Okay. We're just trying to. Keep all the let me say all the puppies in the box right now. Uh, yeah, we talked about this at a committee as a whole. You weren't here, right? And we, there was no information to be talked about. Well, there was information I presented to. I, I emailed each one of you guys. Did you get it? Oh yeah, I believe so. It was quite lengthy. It was from our legal team. Yes. Yes. Okay. I, that was quite a while ago. A while, while ago, right? So probably three weeks ago. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Yeah. So Commissioner Simmons and I went in and talked to Tim, and and we talked about some concerns, and and Tim also felt, and please speak up if I'm incorrect, Tim, that you thought that it would be a good idea to have a meeting, and so that way our goals, what are, um, that way we're all on the same page. What I would benefit greatly from is a unified direction from the board as to what you want to have happen. And I'm not just talking about transition, about anything. If there are priorities the board has, uh, it's great to have those hashed out. We put timetables to them and we, we move forward. Um, you know, we did do a little bit of that back in January, but with three relatively new commissioners, it's it's kind of hard at that stage to know exactly what the county does. Uh, and what you might want to see happen. So this is a great, for me, a great opportunity, um, you know, quarter of the way into the term to help really put some focus on it and really something we should probably do about every six months anyway, uh, you know, to keep stock uh, as, as we move forward, but have some agenda item dedicated just to this, even if it's just 15 minutes. Uh, it just goes a long way for me in terms of making sure that what, what you need to see done is getting done. Well, and we we talked as well as how that's all fairness when it comes to doing um, your evaluation. I mean, if you don't know what our expectations are, that's not fair to you. So <clears throat> we had talked about having a special meeting just directed towards that. A committee in the whole in the near future is uh, there's not much business on that. Maybe we could put it on that or have a, a special meeting for that. So if anybody needs that information, it was quite extensive. I can re-email it. Not so sure what is the, it. Uh, what, uh, we're, we're having a meeting to review his performance? Nope. Having a meeting to discuss 
basically what the responsibilities are of an administrator slash controller and what our expectations are. Um, if you look at that, that the uh, legal team sent to us, the the responsibilities are very, very, very extensive. Yeah. So before we're able to evaluate this new role um, and do a job performance, I think we all need to, and it says in there numerous times at, at the discretion of the board. So I think we all need to have that discussion um, so we know exactly what the expert, I think that's only fair, yeah, somebody so in a job role. I mean, I think that's a, a good start move and Tim's even uh, agrees that uh, he would like to see it, so. He's 100% on board. board. So that will be upcoming. Item 11, elected officials and department head reports. Clerk, do you have anything? Brett Gildner, Ogemaw County Clerk. Uh, just a couple things. Just want to bring the date to your attention. August 1st is the deadline to put anything on the ballot for November. Uh, as far as I know, nobody is planning on filing anything, but the deadline is August 1st. Um, next, August 21st through the 24th is my annual Michigan Association of County Clerks uh, meeting. And on that Tuesday, they're actually focusing the entire day on training by the Bureau of Elections. So um, they opened it up for additional staff to come. So I am taking my chief deputy county clerk, Tracy Turner, with me on that Tuesday so that we can um, learn everything that we can and have two sets of ears um, in regards to the new proposal and the way that the elections are gonna change. Um, and then I have asked to be put on the agenda next week for a couple things, so more to come on that. Um, what was it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. At all? No, I heard more and I didn't hear what more what. More to come on that. I've asked to be put on the committee of the whole agenda next week. For a couple different things so there will be more you guys will hear more from me to next week oh so we're not going to hear anything until next week i just gave my report did you hear me talk about that yes okay the only thing i didn't hear about was the very last thing you said okay yeah just for next week i have a couple different things that i um have for you guys so more to come on that next week. All right. I just gave my report. Treasurer? I'm sorry, geez. Oh. Yes, I'm looking at you, Treasurer. I'm sorry. Good evening, Karen Piglowski, Oakma County Treasurer. I just wanted to inform the board that the land bank has sold a second piece of property. Um, it was the one located on the East First Street, Prescott, that the two of you helped clean up. We were able to sell that. It is now back on the tax roll and a productive part of our... Oh, well, nice. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, we're currently waiting for the new grant agreements to arrive so we can begin work on our next project, which is in Churchill Township. It's a burned down piece of property that's been sitting there for a couple of years. So as soon as we have that grant, we can- Is that the one on Morrison Road? On State. Oh. Or by the cemetery. Oh, so we're excited. We're excited to have this grant funding. We're excited to get started on a couple more projects of blight removal from our community. I had a message today from uh, the village of Prescott related to, have you been in contact with them at all? Two properties? Okay. I'll listen to the message again, and then I'll, I'll probably point them in your direction. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Any other uh, elected officials or department heads? I don't think anybody's on the phone, so come on up, lady. You've got the floor. <laughs> all right. Uh, good evening, Julie Darton, MSU Extension District 4 Director. Um, Ogemon County is one of the seven counties in my district. And um, I finally got approval to discuss with you our um, upcoming hires uh, or start dates for our hires that we've made for Ogemon County. First and foremost, um, we've hired a community nutrition instructor who will be delivering nutrition and physical activity education um, in three counties, Ross Common, Ogama, and Aranac counties. Um, Alexandra Clemens is scheduled to have her start date on Monday, August 14th. Um, she actually works for MSU Extension as a county support staff person 
um, in um, Sheboygan County, um, and she is relocating, um, and her base office will be in Roscommon, but she'll also have a base of operations here in Ogama County for when she's working in Ogama and Aranac. Um, the job of a community nutrition instructor is to deliver um, education across the lifespan to adults, youth, parents, and older adults, usually in series. Um, uh, usually this the education is delivered across six sessions. She also has the opportunity to deliver one-time presentations and to do um, work with uh, schools and other agencies in terms of policy systems and environmental change. So that work really has the power to reach more people because it's helping these organizations like schools make changes to their cafeteria, for example, um, and to promote healthy option as the first option or to help organizations, workplaces change policies. For example, you know, hey, we always have donuts on Thursdays. We're going to have donuts, but we're also going to have fruit. So it's adding a healthy choice in with an existing situation. Um, so we're really excited to have Alexander start. Um, and then also on Monday, August 14th, which is the first Monday of the fair week, um, we have our 4-H program coordinator beginning her job. Um, and I have to, I had to wait until background checks and everything were cleared for individuals before I could make these announcements. Stephanie Stevens will beginning, be beginning that job. Um, um, we're going to have her start right out at the fairgrounds. Um, we're very fortunate that the Ogama County 4-H Beef Club helped us clean out the cabin and get it ready to occupy out at the fairgrounds. We'll be doing some additional um, just beautification uh, around the cabin, which is behind the horse barn um, on the fairgrounds property um, to get ready for the fair. Um, and we're really excited to have Stephanie get started. Um, the work of a 4 H program coordinator is to support adult volunteers to be that um, extra meaningful and, and helpful adult in a child's life, to lead youth programs, to recruit for programs and help help people in the community develop great 4-H programs. Certainly, Fair Week is um, a busy time for someone to start that job, but I don't necessarily get a say in when that start date is. It's determined by a lot of factors, one of which is uh, when those background checks appear. But I will also say it is a wonderful opportunity for her to be introduced to a whole lot of people who support the 4-H program and who are really supportive of, of what we do. So we'll be hitting the ground running there with that. Um, we're continuing to do a lots of different educational programs. So one of the opportunities that we're promoting is um, a program for adults to who qualify by income to earn um, vouchers for fruits and vegetables. Um, this will be in supplement to any assistance that they receive uh, from the government. Um, for food, um, and we're recruiting in partnership with My Michigan Health. So individuals who attend this, this series of classes, they'll get this additional funding as an incentive to continue, and we're definitely recruiting from, um, from Ogama County. There are three locations in Ogama County where people can redeem those coupons, um, one of which is um, O'Farrell Farms. Um, um, and so we're excited about the opportunity for people to add to their diet um, with fresh fruits and vegetables. In addition to that, um, we have online webinars to keep people where they are. Um, and it just occurred to me while I was waiting to talk to you that uh, these are some opportunities I need to share with the treasurer because we're promoting money management for individuals. Um, those are online classes, including understanding tax foreclosure. So people facing tax foreclosure, um, but also being an informed renter, making a household budget. Those are some of the courses that we offer statewide with our um, personal, uh, personal finance and um, money management um, team statewide. And then another statewide opportunity people can learn in the privacy and comfort of their own home is um, how to preserve food. So we do, we deliver those courses online um, so people can understand how to make that work in their own setting at their own home. Um, and we try to follow uh, what's fresh and what's fresh in season. 
Um, but included in that are a lot of tips on how to make things safe. So in um, on July 31st, we'll be talking to people about how to safely preserve fruit by freezing, um, how to use dry beans uh, the first week of August or the first full week of August, um, and then how to pack a safe school lunch the following week. Um, so those courses are offered between noon and one online and then also between six and seven. So we're trying to make sure we're meeting people who have different schedules for work. Um, and then finally, we do have a series that we offer to parents um, online. Those courses always start in the evening and they are done um, virtually, mostly because parents who have just put their kids to bed don't need another thing that they need to leave the house for. Um, so we have an online set, series of classes. Um, August 1st, relax, alternatives to anger for parents and caregivers. So this is really an emotional management tool teaching adults how to, um, how to divert themselves, how to take a moment to gather themselves before they engage with their kids um, and how to avoid um, having an angry moment. Um, and I'm sure we've all had those moments that we wish we would have known some of those skills. I certainly do. Um, and then um, August 8th, Together We Can um, is a curriculum that we have where it's teaching parents who don't live together how to co-parent. So increasingly, we know those skills are really necessary. Having parents who are not living together learn how to communicate with one another Sometimes that's easier than other times. Um, how to teach kids early skills for literacy is August 15th. And then talking about screen time for children is August 22nd. So a lot of topics that are really of interest to parents um, and parents can uh, attend those in the comfort of their own home via distance technology. Um, and hopefully it's after bedtime from 8 to 9.30. So they have the opportunity to ask questions, to learn from the experience of other parents, and to learn about the best research that we can offer in terms of those things. Um, I haven't seen you in a while. I uh, hope that I can bring our new staff to meet you very soon. Um, it's likely that they won't be at the August 17th meeting, just because that is the week of fair and Thursday is quite busy. So there is can... not a meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked on your schedule to see if that was the case and it was still on the website. So okay. thank you for letting me know. Well, come out and meet uh, Stephanie at the fairgrounds and I'll make sure to have Stephanie and Alex come and meet you in person the next time that they're available. And I appreciate the correction. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Any other elected you. officials or department heads? Okay, we see matters on the floor. Are there any commissioners? Motions for adoption? Commissioner matters, Report. Oh. Matters from the floor is uh, at the last, just before the last uh, call meeting, I asked Tim to contact uh, Matt North, North, Northstrom, yep. whatever his name is. <laughs> on Tanagan, um, about uh, maybe giving us a little refresher about closed meeting and uh, closed meeting um, etiquette or however you say it, because um, I think we need to be reminded that the closed session meeting uh, business needs to be kept in closed session. So I would like that. I'd like them to be contacted again and see if we could have them talk a little bit about it at, at the next call meeting. We can. Uh, I did speak with uh, the legal team, and Matt was not available tonight, but okay. Don is on, and he is, um, you know, been briefed on the request as well. So I think he's ready. If you want to have a conversation right now, you could. That'd be good. Don, do you have I anything? I think it takes long and all. Don, do you have anything you'd like to add? Hi there, can you hear me? Yep. Um, so I believe I, uh, the ask was uh, perhaps for just a, a short discussion about uh, the closed session portion of the Open Meetings Act. And so I'm just gonna go through a few bullet points and be happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Um, as And some of this, of course, you already know, the Open Meetings Act is one of Michigan's sunshine laws. It's intended to promote good government through transparency. 
and it requires public meetings to um, to occur um, uh, with participation of the public um, and with notice, et cetera. However, the uh, legislature has recognized that um, you know to have a, a well functioning uh, governmental body, sometimes it's beneficial to have a closed session. So, and, I, and again, I know you're familiar with this, but I'll just go through it. Uh, the legislature has set forth some specific topic areas for which you can have a closed session, uh, including things like the purchase of lease or, or leasing of real property, the negotiation of CBAs, uh, certainly one that has come up here, written legal opinions, et cetera. And so you vote to go into a closed session and it's anticipated that everything that occurs in that closed session is confidential. Uh, when you go in, actually, uh, just a couple more points about closed session. When you go into closed session, the purpose is to deliberate, not to vote. I know you know that and you don't vote, but perhaps some people who are watching right now don't know that. So when you're in closed session, you're you're deliberating on just that subject matter you went into closed session for. It's not a wide ranging, open-ended discussion. And uh, no actions are taken except when you vote to go out of closed session and go back into open session where you might vote on something. When you go into closed session, the board has discretion to invite non-board members into that closed session. They can, the AG has opined that uh, the board can include officers, employees, and even private citizens if it's beneficial to the conducting the business of the board. There's some anticipation, obviously, that they would honor uh, the confidentiality of that closed session of, as well if they're there. I know that, again, that's not the gravamen of your question, but I'm just, just kind of go, going through some background. In the closed session, minutes are taken, and those minutes are equally confidential. You hear that word over and over again, confidential. And those minutes are kept for one year and one day, and then they're destroyed. Um, unlike your typical minutes, there's no voting in closed session, and therefore I think it's just anticipated. There's not a lot of reason to keep a closed session minutes for a long period of time. I, I keep coming back to confidential because um, discussing certain things, and I, I, you know, again, I just pulled out a couple from the statute. I believe there's nine um, different categories, but I just pulled out a couple. Uh, discussing the purchase or lease of real property up to the time a purchase agreement is signed. Um, it's just not something that's beneficial to talk about in open session. And uh, because you're revealing your hand, it's hard, it makes it more difficult to negotiate a purchase agreement if, if you broadcast what, uh, what price you're willing to pay, et cetera. So, um, you know, these are, these are well-defined areas where just good government says this should, this, this should be kept confidential. Uh, there are violations uh, and penalties if uh, the Open Meetings Act is violated, including the closed session provisions within the Open Meetings Act. There's uh, civil and criminal penalties. The civil penalty uh, for violating the act is a, a fine of up to uh, $500 plus paying attorney fees. And I don't suppose I'd have to mention it might also require redoing the meeting. Um, don't know exactly how that would work for a closed session, or how, but uh, it would be something interesting to sort out for sure. Um, there's also a criminal penalty uh, for a first offense, a fine up to $1,000, and subsequent uh, offenses uh, can get more, even more severe. Mostly, um, you know, keeping everything that's intended to be confidential, confidential. It's, it's just an important part of conducting good business and, uh, and not discussing it with, uh, with people who aren't uh, members of the board. Uh, it, it, just, uh, it just helps everything move a good deal more smoothly. Um, if any of you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And if any of you wanna talk separately, uh, at any time, uh, I'd be happy to talk to you as well. And Matt would be happy to talk with you as well. Uh, just just shoot us an email or give us a call. We're, we're always available. Any questions for him? Thank you.
Any questions, commissioners? No, just thank thank you. I that was a very good explanation. Okay, you bet. Item, item 14, you. commissioner reports. Commissioner Simmons. Um we like calendar here. So what we had a, a transit meeting this morning and Commissioner uh Wilsey will handle that because I won't discuss that today. Uh, he will take care of that. Uh, I did not go to um, the Parks and Rec meeting this month because of a medical situation within the family. So I can't discuss Parks and Rec either. That would be Mr. Scott would have to take that. Uh, Horton, Town Horton Township is their assessors right on target, moving right along with getting everything squared away there. Um, I understand he's working with equalization also. And um, they're also having an MTA meeting. Um, the Excuse me. The 22nd of August. <laughs> I keep looking at July. So 22nd of August is the MTA meeting. So I hope everybody can go to that. They have kind of interesting meetings. Um, went to the airport meeting. Um, not too much was discussed at the airport meeting. We just um, so I have nothing to add about the airport meeting at all, really, to be honest with you. Uh, that's that's about it. What time? Oh, DHD two. Um, there's a proposal by the state to um, have septic tanks inspected every five years. And uh, what's going forward with different health departments is to have it uh, inspected at point of sale. Because uh, going through the numbers with the health department, uh, DHD2, it'd be virtually impossible to do it every five years. Number one, don't have the money. We don't nearly have the manpower. Uh, and they were talking about how many men and how many man hours that would all take. And it's astronomical. So there were, Putting forward if they would do it uh, point of sale versus every five years. I don't, I don't know how they would be able to do it. So that was a big issue, really, with uh, the health department. What time's the MTA meeting? It's at um, seven. Six o'clock. The meal's at six, the meeting's at 6 30. Okay. Anything else? That's pretty much it. Commissioner Mayhew? Pretty quiet. All right, where are you, Michael? Yeah, I don't have anything to report this time either. I have all of our meetings start next week. So, Commissioner Scott? I did attend uh, the Road Commission uh, meeting. Uh, they went over some working rules. Uh, the attorneys had some revisions. Their working rules had not been updated for quite a few years. Uh, Tim Lampham was there from uh, the engineering. Uh, there's a, a road of right away abandonment request on Rifle River Trail over in Commissioner Wilsey's area. Uh, Rifle River Trail was changed years ago, and when it when it got rerouted, the uh, right away was is still owned by the Road Commission, so they're asking for an abandonment of it so that that will create a front yard for this building there they went over uh they went over their pension uh their pension issues uh and of course their uh they had their capital outlay draft also uh for 24 and then they went over their equipment and road report updates which is a regular meeting thing well uh, at the airport uh well First of all, we're going to get a coffee maker because it took the whole meeting <laughs> to get half the pot made. Uh, second of all, um, the, our, our administrator has been buying some supplies with his own money and waiting for the month to uh, get reimbursed. So we're going to have a credit card issued to him uh, so that he's not spending his own money. Um, we yeah, talked. Doing the wing. Hmm? Wings on uh, Wings for Michigan fundraiser. 
that fundraiser that he talked about. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, there's the Wings of Mercy um, fundraiser coming up. Uh, and uh, we they want to have that. It's a month-long fundraiser. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Help me out. It's a month-long fundraiser from August 1st through September 9th that the pilots basically pay to fly in um, and then they get donations from their friends and family for this event and it is to help to help people who get flown by helicopters and planes to medical appointments and such but um potentially one of my groups that i belong to that i'm the uh a board member on we're going to be there to feed the pilots hot dogs or some sort of food to make money off of um for my group so it's kind of a two-way fundraiser thing yeah, we talked about different groups coming in. Yeah. Uh, we also we also uh, voted to uh, expand our our farming areas and uh, spend another ten thousand dollars on land clearing operations. And this this will be focused on properties now on the west side of Teach Lake Road. So uh, it, it, it's quite a bit quite a bit of stuff there. Um, then I also attended Ogma Township meeting. Uh, there wasn't a lot of things, but right now they're talking with the city on tying the water systems together. Um, we're getting a lot more exposure out in Ogma Township, and uh, there may be a need in the future to tie together that we could supply either way. Um, so just looking down the road at, at those things. So that's that's what went on since the last meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Wiltsy. Um, I gave most of my reports already for July. I just had a few things. Uh, we did have a transit meeting today uh, with our, with our committee. That was our, our third meeting. Um, we got a good, strong committee and a, um, a very, they are very in-depth with uh, wanting to be there and, and trying to really uh, make some good things happen there at the transit. So it's really nice to see that uh, report on the new construction for there. Uh, we still don't have the final okay from MDOT, which is very disappointing. Um, we have heard of a, a delay that caused some of that. And that's something that me and Commissioner Simmons will talk with Tim about. Um, again, these things are you know time sensitive. We have a, a local contractor with other local contractors, you know, we're hoping to get this still done this year. And uh, it's just important that we we do everything possible to make this to make this work. And you know, now we're coming into August 1st. So uh, we still do not have uh, have any type of date set for that as of right now. Um, Saturday service, which has always been a big, a big topic this year for for transit is still running, running strong on average about 60 people a day. 60 people on Saturdays um, are getting uh, are getting on the buses. Um, employee situation at the transit staying pretty steady. We do have a full-time employee that is going to be retiring at the end of August. So we'll have a, an opening um, after that employee retires. And uh, Ray does seem to have a pretty good plan in place for that. Um, maintenance issues there, something that you guys hear me continue to talk about. You know, this past month, we've had some some family issues with some of the key players that's involved there. So totally understand that we got to get past that. And um, these items are extremely important and, and hopefully we're going to start getting some real good direction on that um, immediately. Uh, EMS, I'll at our next meeting, I should be able to report who the new EMS director will be. Uh, Trista will be re retiring at the end of August. We did, I was on the interview panel last week. We had some really good applicants and it was a hard decision. Uh, but we did make a decision, but right now there's contract talks and uh, hopefully we'll get through that beginning of next week, have a special meeting on Wednesday and be able to uh, get that new director uh, locked down in place. So hopefully at our next uh, 
report, I'll, I'll be able to share that. Uh, Sting meeting, which was set up for tomorrow, has been canceled. And then just one more thing, uh, you guys have heard me talk about this re regional housing partnership, which you know eventually down the road could be real big for Oklahoma County. Um, I have been, I'm on two different focus groups, uh, like I was saying, the housing stock and the rental housing. And we've had a few Zoom meetings getting prepared for our uh, big meeting this coming Monday, uh, the 31st, where we're going to be making uh, presentations on all, all the focus groups and then putting that all together to present to the state by uh, September 1st. So that's what I have for tonight. Uh, item 15, general public comment. Is there any general public comment in the room? Any general public comment on the phone? Item, did you have something? Item, item 16, adjournment. Can we have a motion to oh, adjourn? I have one. I'm sorry. Before we adjourn, uh, we have a meeting also uh, on the uh, confidential employee personnel manual. So I would like to meet with okay. him and give him some of my suggestions. I've already given you a couple because uh, I've gone through the draft and made comments on it. And then maybe afterwards, um, Commissioner David and I can meet with you Absolutely. to hopefully finalize this thing. Absolutely. Thank you. Motion to adjourn at 640? Yep. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Everybody have a good night. Thanks, thanks, Craig.